I, I would say a pretty big wow moment. Derek Carr was benched. I I texted you, and again, had a lot of time to think yesterday. From a player standpoint, not like a, you know, a coach fired like Nate Hackett or Jeff Saturday being named. I'm talking an individual player. Something happening. Like ultimately, if I told you Matt Ryan got benched, you know, September 1st, like that was going to happen. That was believable if the Colts had, you know, he was had been trending the wrong way. Say Derek Carr getting benched. You could argue is the craziest thing to happen. Just from a pure football player standpoint this season. Not like off the field, not some fake drama. It 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 would be at least in the running. <clears throat> if I would have told you Derek Carr is going to get benched before week one this year, I'm like, I'd have a hard time seeing that. What he had just come off of, resurrecting his career, being a huge reason that they had made the playoffs last year. Remember, they did not have Devontae last year. Ruggs killed somebody, and Waller was pretty sure he was banged up last year. He's like, he was like him and Renfro. Zay Jones. And now he's fucking benched in his Raider career. Because when you see he's benched, you go, well, his career's over with the Raiders. Right. Well, I, I think the way you put it, I definitely agree. If you had said that before the season began, Derek Carr's going to get benched. It definitely crossed my mind watching the Steelers game, like after that game ended. Not in like a, I think I have a takeaway, but just in a, they wouldn't, <clears throat> they wouldn't change quarterbacks at some point, would they, Way. Uh you know, after that point in time, it felt a little less crazy, but I think we have to combine it was benched and then it turned out it's also went home or was sent home or agreed to leave because uh, they didn't want him or he didn't want to be this part. We need some clarification on who really decided that it was good for Derek to leave a distraction. Because you and I have both been around the NFL in a variety of ways and sports in a variety of ways. Yeah, let me on the that. crazy that that was the craziest part, like the individual player. But we had like ben twenty minutes home. to just sit with. Actually, it was more than twenty minutes to just sit with Derek got bench, and that in and of itself felt crazy because it was this end of an era for Derek Carr and the Raiders. And then we followed up with he's he went home, and the idea that he's a distraction is like it's it's one billionth on the list of distractions that teams have worked their way through. We remember you and I were at the Coliseum the week that they benched Eli when he was, he was like one, what was he one? He was like right on the precipice of some consecutive game starts record or some weird thing for Geno Smith. And then Eli ends up coming off the bench, I think in that game, but he definitely started the next week. Like the idea that the locker room couldn't handle questions about why Jared Stidham is starting this week is so stupid. Like, I don't buy that for a second. Whoever decided he shouldn't be there, whether it was the Raiders, Josh, Mark, Derek, them together, it was ego is the reason he's not there. Like them not wanting to be around each other or them not wanting him there because they don't want him there is the reason he's not there, which is crazy. Like outside of you committing some crime or ripping everybody publicly, the idea that you just disappear from the team because you got benched, is insane. Like it's that's fucking insane. nuts, guys. It's nuts. It's nuts. You don't get no one gets sent home because a professional locker room can't handle a few questions. What is is a locker room open? Is like everyone just standing there required to talk for three hours a day? Guys disappear to the locker room to the weight room. You answer a question for five minutes, you move on. Je, uh Henry Ruggs killed a person last year, and John Gruden got and fired dog. for email and a dog, and John Gruden got fired for emails. And somehow they handled that, but they couldn't possibly handle the distraction of questions of Derek Carr getting benched. Nobody should buy that explanation for two milliseconds. Yeah, let me rephrase. The the benching, because independently of benching, like he had played really shitty. It, he definitely had. Uh, and anytime you get a new regime, new coach, new GM, things change. I don't care who you are. So the, the benching is not independently that crazy. Guys get benched. I even don't think they want to bench him. Whatever. Financially, it makes sense. The crazy part, running on some, my head's not firing all cylinders, is the sent home. <laughs> is the sent home. You want to bench him, and obviously you're benching him because you don't, he gets injured, he has to pass a physical, right, March, whatever, $40 million. I get it. Like, that. that's not that weird. I'm not going to make fun of the Raiders for doing that. If they're, if Josh's going to move on. Now, we can talk about million Josh. million they'd be on the hook for if he got hurt in that game. Not 40? Well, someone's yes. 33 next year, then seven the next year. So 40 total. 
Yeah, so I, I I get it. Like that's uh that's a lot of money, and basically you're stuck with a quarterback. But sending him home, I, I I'm not trying to be funny here. I'm not trying to be sarcastic. Just think about. Remember Aaron Hernandez once went to the facility, and Belichick or Kraft came down and said, "You have to leave." I, when I was with the Eagles, Deshaun wanted a new contract. One day at practice, for whatever reason, I didn't usually go to practice. I was out there, and they were punting him balls, and he like wasn't moving. It's really bizarre. Deuce Staley started yelling at him. They finally punted him a ball. He he didn't move. It was practice, you know. Grabbed the ball, punted it. He got sent home. Like, to get sent home and Draymond, right, slugs him. It's immediately, like, you got to leave. Like, it's, these are, all, I saw a tweet that was like, Matt Ryan has been benched multiple times this year, and he's still welcome. Like, it's, people get benched in sports. The other thing, the incidences you said last year, their number one spokesman beside Rich and Mike was Derek. Derek has seen this franchise. Like, listen, I don't. We don't have all the details, and I, I've said over and over, if Derek, if you, they forced you to leave, and like we don't want you here, you got to fucking come out. You can't be quiet here. You got to sit down with Jay Glazer. You got to do something immediately and say, because that is, he has earned for. Listen, we can discuss his football. It's been up and down, and this year was shitty. It was shitty, though the the coach, like, let's check his resume. It's pretty questionable. As a, a mutual friend of ours texted me yesterday, to have Derek at 60% completion at this point in time in his career is pretty insane because he gets completions with his eyes closed. That's one thing he kind of hung his hat He was 68% last year. A, a lifetime, 65%. So I'm sorry, Josh deserves some blame here. Uh, but regardless, to send him home, I do believe this. If it's the Raiders, like, 90% them, and Derek's like, I'm not going to fight you on this. I'm not going to try to be like, you don't even want me around. I'll leave. I think it's one of the biggest clown, most embarrassing moments I've ever seen. Like, just such a low-level, low life. And honestly, if Derek didn't want to be there, like, that's a low-level move. So I, I need some more information on exactly. I know Josh's guy back in New England, Howe, Jeff Howe. covers the Patriots. Now, Boom, well, now, he's the, now he's the athletic, but he was with the cover the pass. But yeah. New England, right? Yeah. Athletic. Yep. So came out and basically said, like, Derek is on board. Like, I am not on board if I'm Derek. Like, there, there's and a then the rap sheet's report was a little different, right? Rap sheet said they mutually, they both talked and both agreed it'd be best for everybody to leave. It's just insanity. And, and it's just such, th this whole situation is just so Raiders. It's just so Raiders. I actually watching, we haven't talked since that Kingsbury report came out. They're like, he might quit. Well, of course they'd want him to quit. He's got five years left. Just sign an extension. I do think both these two teams in the desert are so similar. And if if Scottsdale, Arizona, and Vegas were stocks, I think the next 20 years, these markets are going to be so fucking big. And these two franchises that we've seen, like, they have, I mean, the Super Bowl's here, playoffs, like, it's a big deal here. Vegas now with the same way. Both these two franchises, now, Arizona has no history like the Raiders, but the Raiders' history goes back to, like, fucking... People talk about the 70s. <laughs> That's what they're holding on to here. <laughs> you know, in a couple Gruden years. Both have two owners that were handed the team from their father. Now, Bidwell's dad was never successful. Marx was. <clears throat> but both of them, I think if the league could, would do anything. I mean, the Suns just went for $4 billion. The, the, the Cardinals would go $5 billion with their eyes closed. And we've always talked the Raiders would, you know, 7, 8. I mean, it would be an astronomical number. These two franchises just have such, they're just such low level operations. What's going on with Vegas, or I mean, with Arizona, with all, their administration, Kime's gone, Cliff, with the Raiders. It's just, they, they, they honestly feel like they're paralleling each other right now, guy. <clears throat> it's crazy. But the difference is, is Derek has been there. Like, there's no like Larry Fitzgerald dealing with the problem, right? Kyler, no one's taking sides, really. It's like loser, loser. I wouldn't want to. With the Raiders, Derek's earned the equity of being treated. I think pretty well. You can bench him. This is it's pro sports cutthroat league. I, I don't think you can do that, man. <laughs> I agree. I mean, and you've said it, you know, the idea that Mark Davis loves Derek is something that I think a lot of, uh, 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 uh it's not the case. And you've said that for a while. I heard Lombardi, basically Michael Lombardi said that today on his podcast too, but you have to deal with the re if you're Mark Davis, you have to accept the reality of what the situation is. And the situation is that he's been, for better or worse, the face of your franchise for several years now. Because you've had six coaches since he came. Two interims. Two interims. How many quarterbacks have two interim coaches? Uh, not many. 
He's had six coaches since 2014. And last year, in a disaster, he was the face of them. Him and Rich Passaccia, two guys who you don't want. You, we know you don't want Rich because you got rid of him. And the rumors are that you don't want Derek. Those two guys were the ones that represented your franchise pretty well, I'd say. So, But you would even have to rewind, right? Guy, they moved, but they didn't move. They stayed in Oakland. And Derek had to be the spokesman. Think about that. Yeah. Like, that was... No one moves and stays. Even the Chargers, right, went to the little... Like, they stayed in Oakland. Like, it was... I don't try to beat up on the Raiders. And the only reason I truly know is because I was kind of around them closely and saw it and interacted and just saw the ethos of what these people stand for. And it's just kind of embarrassing. Now, every franchise can have their embarrassing moments. It's football, right? It, it happens. No, no, you can have the way the Eagles did Doug Peterson. Like, that's... They're probably better than that. Like it, all these, the Giants have had some moments with coaches. I I don't expect no one does. Like it's you're going to have these moments. I would say the Raiders though consistently have just done things. I mean they have. I mean no no one even argues it. Like it's it's kind of a fucking joke. Some of the things that they get away with. And it's not. I'm not trying to pick on Mark, but and and Mark, I think he would be on the on the list of people if they could replace higher than the guy in Arizona because I you know Vegas. It's just such a hub now for these spots and just that franchise. Uh, I, I just think they they'd get them out of there and they're. It doesn't like, feel like the not, guy. In there, it doesn't feel like Bidwell like vote like I. He just he kind of in line with what the other owners want, right? From like a voting standpoint, he's not in their way. Mark he, has voted he, against them, and you know, th like the move situation. Mark was on the opposite side of everybody else. Totally agree. That's true. So, I, I think Bidwell kind of knows his place and avoids. But he's yeah, it, it stays that. out of it. I mean, to be clear, I don't think I know. I don't have a problem with Derek getting. Well, I shouldn't say I have no problem. I, I got to me like Derek getting benched for Jared Stidham is no big issue, even though I think it's kind of a joke. If you just fundamentally say, guys, we've decided internally he's not our quarterback anymore next year. And we want to be able to make sure that a we don't end up in a situation where he gets hurt against the number one defense and Nick Bosa, the top sacker in the league. He gets hurt and we're stuck, and then we can't trade him because he's hurt. We just watched what happened with Jimmy Garoppolo and the Niners. They got stuck. That's enough for me. Like, that's fine. But organizations make big picture decisions all the time. Now, they normally don't do it when they ha when they still haven't been mathematically eliminated from the playoffs, which is what the Raiders just did. But it the organizations do it all the time. So I got no big like that's not your beef, right? But the, I mean, they are six and nine. John, listen to this. Tell me how crazy would it be crazy for these four teams to win? Texans at home against the Jags. Pats Jags, are at home. Jags are hot right now. I know. I, I just said crazy. Te Texans are too. Texans are too. Pats at home against the Dolphins. Teddy Bridgewater. Uh, no, no. Seahawks at home against the Jets. Jets are favored. Mike Weiss back. Ravens at home against the Steelers. No. If those four teams won and, <laughs> and the Raiders beat the Niners, they'd have a 12% chance of making the playoffs. The Raiders also then would need to beat the Chiefs. That'd be next. <laughs> that'd be next week's problem. They'd have a twelve percent chance of making the playoffs if that stuff happened on Saturday. I'm not saying there's a chance that happened. I'm just saying these things normally don't happen before teams been mathematically eliminated. But whatever. Again, it, my issue is not that they benched him. He hasn't been good. It may be it, it, like I think we've all talked for a while now. It may be time for them to move on, and for him, I think it might be better for him. But. Do you, is that, I mean, are we on the same page? Or is your issue that they benched him or just the way it has all played out? Yeah, I, to me, I factor in zero that your quote unquote playoff chances are alive, like you're okay. dead. Uh, okay. Uh, no, no issue with not wanting to be on the hook. You're done with them. And I guess he's been there a long time. I, I just, I have a heart. We have seen Eli Manning win multiple Super Bowls. Like, where is, is it possible to just be like, where the fuck is, is Mark Davis a bad guy? I get you don't like him, and I would understand owning the team, but wouldn't you be like, no, you you, you stay around? You the mean team. is Derek like the, a bad guy? I'm saying Mark Davis. Yeah, like does he think Derek's a bad he, guy. Well, he's ultimate. Like, you no, know, I'm saying like, how does Mark Davis allow him to like not be around the team for a couple of weeks? That's just such a low level. The only I, I way is if he's a bad guy, right? If Derek's that, a bad guy, then you're like, okay, maybe. Well, he's not. Like to me, you just no, you you're staying around here because of what it represents. Right. I thought yesterday, and again, if it comes out, 
I'll say I'm wrong. If Derek was, I got to leave. Like, that's that's a loser move, too. It's a loser move. Whoever is responsible for this is no way around. It, it's, it wouldn't be acceptable at high-level places. Not with a guy with equity, right? It's not about what he's done recently. It's about the equity in the franchise. And he's built it up. He's taken a franchise. It's a fucking clown show joke to the playoffs twice and been their best player both times. I guess that's a fact. Without him, you know, th- this franchise loses a lot. Like this year is what they do normally. Like th- this is not an abnormal year for them. It's why we said when Devontae, like, you got to be careful. You're leaving the Green Bay Packers, who what? Win a lot <laughs> to come to Mark Davis and Josh McDaniels. Right. Mark Davis's history is never had a job till he got handed the team. Like, again, that's a fact. And now you could argue maybe some owners are the same way. It's a unique spot in life when your parents worth that much money. Though Arthur Smith took a different tactic. He worked. Yeah. Uh, that And Josh McDaniels, when you had LaFleur, Gudikins, Aaron Rodgers, like that was most human beings with a brain said, Devontae, you're nuts. Because it wasn't like the Packers, remember, they wanted to pay him, but they're like, we're not going to fight him on this. We don't have, if he doesn't want to be here, he's not going to sign our contract. We'll trade you, right? It was very different than the Tyree Kill situation where Andy and Veach are like, let's pivot, right? Right. Where the Packers are like, we we did not. And our no one there, Aaron Rodgers, they wanted him to come back. Uh, I'm just let me read you a little uh, Vic Tafer here, John. During the interview process, Dave Ziegler and Josh McDaniels were a little taken aback by what they heard about Carr. Mark Davis turned the reins over of the two week search to former VP of Player Personnel Ken Herock. Herock now 81. It's not one to mince words. Other GM and coaching candidates were shocked by how disparagingly Raiders officials in the interview room spoke of Carr, according to people familiar with the discussions. As of Tuesday, after two days of meeting, it seemed like, and this is Vic writing, that that uh, they that Ziegler and Josh were leaning towards keeping Derek the starter. That's when Davis stepped in and decided it was time for a change. Well, this article no, does not get into um, how the breakup, like how he like got the, sent off. Yeah, him leaving. The, no one was really arguing why why he got benched, right? Like it was a Mark Davis sign. I don't From think so, but standpoint. I don't think a hundred percent of people are aware that Mark may have been the one to pull the trigger on that. Yeah, I, I have a very very good source who's seen it firsthand. And I texted him last night, how long has Mark Davis been wanting to do this? And he said, in all seriousness, probably around 2018. And this is where we've tried to give Mark credit is ultimately, obviously, he hired Gruden, he hired Del Rio, and he's hired these guys. And he kind of lets you do what you want. Like, you can make fun of the Yorks, uh, Mark, for like how they got the job. They are good places historically to work because they just do whatever you want to do. Steelers, Draft whoever right? you want to do. Steelers is a, is a legacy inheritance. Yeah, but it, I don't know if, like, does Tomlin get full reins on everything? Like, the Ra- one thing with the Raiders and the Niners, you can draft, sign, do whatever you want to do, unless at the time Mark Davis didn't have the cash to pay Khalil Mack, but that's another story. The point is, like, you're not told. Well, this one, so he wasn't a huge fan of Derek, right? And, and then I would imagine as years went on, you're paying him more money, you're expecting, sure. you're seeing some of these highly paid guys. Even Dak Prescott, say what you want about him. He's just a playoff quarterback every single year. You know, you just expect a little more to Derek, expect a little more. And this year you pay him a ton, even though it's not really guaranteed. And I think other owners are like, God, we die for that contract. Yeah. Right. To be able to pivot out at any moment. He's had two winning seasons. Shits the bed. But I'd say like the Raiders don't win. And a 500 <laughs> season. No, I agree. I'm just saying like, to be fair, we, everyone's wondered if it, if he's, if it's time for them to move on. Right. But even they can't do the thing that is probably pretty acceptable in just a normal way. Right. Benching, deciding to change quarterbacks in 2023 is a pretty acceptable football decision by the Raiders. Right. But I, I, is there a chance that Josh and Ziegler go, hey, Mark, like, we'll do this. But like, where do you think if Tom Brady retires, doesn't want to come out west, Jimmy Garoppolo gets hurt every other game? Like, Derek's been pretty durable for nine plus years as a starter. What do you, who do you think we're going to land? Geno yeah, Smith? Well, don't. I, maybe he thinks they can still get Tom. Maybe he's thinking about that from two years ago. I, you know, don't, I wouldn't assume any logic when it comes to these decisions. Well, no, I don't think there is much logic, but my point is that this decision by Mark, like I, I would, if the Raiders were a stock, 
Would you bet on him or would you short him? How far back in history do you have to go to bet on them? Well, do you think you would have bet on them at coming out like 2016? You would have bet you would have bought Raider stock in 2016 for sure. You, you honestly, you bought it coming into this season. I did. I mean, I would have lost if I had bought pie, low. I would have bought a decent chunk. Bought low. No, but you wouldn't have bought it. What it wasn't low coming into the 2022 season, was it? With Josh and Devonte and Derek? Yeah, I guess well maybe. No, I guess it was. No, you're right. I thought they. You're right. I thought they might be a playoff team. That's true. So, do, like, here's. Do you expect these guys to be on the team next year? Devonte Waller, Renfro's clearly falling out of favor. Like, look at Josh's history. Because this is what I'm saying. Mark lets you do what you want to do. This is the one time that he's had. If they want to trade Devonte Adams, Devonte Adams will get traded. Because we even thought it was kind of weird. Like, that's not really a Patriot move. And then this thing backfires, even though he's been good. But, like, what's the point of it all? Feels like maybe they'll just blow it up. Josh did it before. I don't see why I they wouldn't Mark, do it again. Like, to me, Mark would be – you could get a first for Devontae, right? You could get a better pick than you than you gave. But it'd be, be kind of crazy because I think Mark Davis is very much in win-now mode because he's got to fill the stadium to trade the best receiver, arguably, in the NFL, right? Now, is yeah. Devontae going to demand it? Devontae already kind of forced his way out of one spot. Now, he bears blame for signing up for this. Brandon Ayuk uh, posted on Instagram, sit out this week and stand with your guy. <laughs> incredible, incredible <laughs> comment by Ayuk. <laughs> <laughs> I love how the Niners are getting involved. But not even, it doesn't even feel like he's saying that because I think we'll... It'd be easier to win. Like, just it's just like, okay, put your money where your mouth is, buddy. Yeah, is he just kind of laughing at the situation? Like, kind of knows Devonte. I've had a lot of people ask me about Ayuk. I'm like, yeah, he's he's chippy. You know, he's he's because you just watch him in games. He's kind of getting in some fights. Like, he's yeah. the monster was awoke that day we were at practice when the fight happened. He ain't never looked back. No, he hasn't. <laughs> no, we yeah, we <laughs> never were there looked back. He started the fight, got in a fight with Fred or whoever. Uh, incredible. I'm pretty sure it was. Fred, someone asked me about the the specific the specific incident, and I was like, it was either Ray Ray or Danny Gray that Fred killed, and you just don't hit someone like that in practice. Ayuk, yeah. whether he was in on the play or was he was on the sideline, he was on the he other side not, of the field. I think he was on the in other the side play. of the field and came over like a professional wrestler and yeah, tackled came him. flying in like a just a spear. <laughs> speed i don't know what his 40 time is at that point in time you would have told me he was running 4-1 he was moving 